Antibiotics are medicines that are used to um, treat infections and diseases caused by bacteria, such as gonorrhea, pneumonia, and tuberculosis, and many, many more. Now, they won't work against viruses, uh, so nine out of 10 times when you have a sore throat, it's actually caused by a virus, so take antibiotics won't help. They were discovered 70 years ago, and since then they've truly saved millions and millions of lives, uh, people that normally would have died from a normal infection, and they also helped uh, avoid complications through surgery. So, but we've gotten so used to having them around, so we actually are taking them for granted right now. Because we're so used to taking antibiotics, we t sometimes take them for granted without considering whether they will be effective. And often, uh, we don't take them correctly. For example, not finishing the course of a treatment. And when antibiotics are misused and overused, this enables bacteria to become stronger and adapt to protect themselves against the antibiotic and so the antibiotics no longer work, and this is called antibiotic resistance. Uh, this is a growing threat because more and more bacteria are becoming resistant all the time. And at the same time, there's no new antibiotics being developed, new, no new antibiotic classes being developed in the past 25 years. So while an existing, the existing source of antibiotics is becoming ineffective, there's no new ones in the pipeline uh, to replace them. And this means that one day there will be no antibiotics left to treat common infectious infections and which makes them life-threatening again. And we would go back to the situation before antibiotics were discovered. Well, luckily we see that there's an increasing awareness uh, throughout the region, but we also know that more in the eastern part of the region, there's still two out of three countries where people can just go to a pharmacy and buy antibiotics over the counter, so without ever seeing a doctor. So that's a problem, and those are the countries that we really need to focus on to try and change that habit. But also in the other part of the region where uh, ant antibiotic usage is much more restricted and regulated, there's still, uh, from the data that's available, we know that 5 to 12 percent of people going to the hospital actually get an infection there. And it's estimated that about 400,000 of those infections are with resistant bacteria, and approximately 25,000 die each year. So, um, but it's, it's not just a, it's just a regional problem. It's a, it's a global problem. We know that diseases travel and cross borders everywhere. So it's really important that we um, work on this together. Well, there are simple things that everyone can do to reduce the spread of resistance. Uh, so remember that antibiotics are only effective uh, against bacteria, not viruses. So do not use them to treat a viral infection, such as uh, a common cold, the flu, a runny nose or a sore throat. Uh, ask your doctor for other ways to feel better. Uh, and only use antibiotics when they're prescribed by a doctor. Take the full prescription and even if you're feeling better, and make sure that the rest of the family, if they are prescribed an antibiotic, that they also do the same. Never share antibiotics with others, and may, don't use leftover prescriptions for another time where you're not feeling well. So remember that each time when you take an antibiotic, when it's not really necessary, the effectiveness of the antibiotic decreases, and it might not work the next time when you really need it. So last year, all 53 member states of the European region have signed up to an action plan to fight antibiotic resistance. And this means that they are committing to uh, inform the people, raise awareness, uh, promote prudent use of antimicrobial resistance, and, um, and surveillance. Surveillance is, is identified as one of the most important things because we're part of the region, we actually don't know what is going on. Um, we're doing this together with some very key partners, uh, being, for example, the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control, the Dutch Institute for Public Health and the Environment, and the European Society for Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Diseases, as they have the expertise to help us to set up this surveillance in those countries that are not doing surveillance right now, or at least not sharing information. Now, it's very important to get a region-wide overview that all countries know what the trends are, where to, um, where to put intervention in, and how to help each other if you want to make sure that this life-saving antibiotic remains its, its effectiveness for future generations.